There we are. Hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Who's ready for some stamping fun? I've got this amazing card for you today. It is going to be great. Hey, Brenda. Good morning. Uh, here you have a bit of a cold. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of one, Mary, yeah. Do you mentioned it. Well. Guess we'll just have. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, this weather. So here in Oklahoma, we've been covered in ice for the last three days. So um, it has been a stay in and create kind of week for us. In fact, the girls, both my girls are teachers. I've never, you know what? I have decided teachers are more excited about snow days than the kids are. I mean, the teachers are the ones going, dear God, please don't let us have school tomorrow. Especially this time of year. Yeah. So they're so excited. Three days they've had off. Now they'll go back tomorrow because it's going to warm up this afternoon and all this will melt. But they're like, oh, three glorious days of not having to teach those poor guys. I'm telling you. Anyway, so yeah, that's what it's been like around here. Just crazy, crazy weather. And I guess it's going from Texas and Oklahoma and all the way up. So to all our friends on the East, sorry, we're sorry for sending it your way, but we got to get it out of here. So, <laughs> and Brenda, I heard you guys were closed because it was so cold. Oh, minus 28. <laughs> you can keep that. And that was side. without the wind chill. Then they add the wind chill in. I'm like, no, no, this is plenty, plenty cold. <laughs> the minus 28, you had me, but you start talking wind chill oh. below that. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm yeah. just going to stay right here. Okay, so here's another funny story, because this is what we do when we're live, right? Right. So the first day this storm hit was on Tuesday. And I got up and I was like, <laughs> the house is so cold. Oh, my goodness. So I turned on the fireplace and, you know, gotta love a fireplace that you just flip a switch. But anyway, I flipped the switch and I come around the corner and my front door is wide open. Oh, no, no, no. You first you panic, someone is in my house, but the dogs didn't bark, this can't be. But why is my front door wide open when it is 12 degrees outside? And I'm looking around, I'm like, no, Rich's computer's right there. And, you know, it's like, no, nobody's been in the house, but my front door is wide open and it's cold. <laughs> well, there's only one person to blame. And it wasn't me. <laughs> I'm surprised Tucker didn't take off. I can't believe, I guess it was too cold. <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm staying here. <laughs> that puppy loves to escape when he can, but nope, door wide open. All right, well, there you go. That's... <laughs> That's what's happening in our house. Oh, man, I don't even want to know what my electric bill is going to be this month. Because, yeah, when you're trying to cool off a house, it's 12 degrees. Oh, no. Mr. Austin did not quite get the door closed all the way when he left. And a little wind came along and blew it open. So that's what we get. All right, friends. Well, that's the, our little chatter to give everybody a chance to get on. I'm so glad that you're here. Like I said, I've got two really really cool fun folds for you today. Let's go over to the stamping table. Let's see what we got today. Well, as always, we've got a free download. And uh, I know Brenda's going to be sharing the link to the download. Let me get my comments turned on so I can see who all is here. Sharon and Judy and Margie and Nina, thanks for joining you guys. We're so glad you're here. So this is the free download that I have for you featuring the Bay Window Valentine cards. Now, you guys know, it doesn't have to be a Valentine's card, but it's that time, right? We got to start thinking about those Valentine cards. And in fact, in my newsletter, I talked a little bit about how important it is to make those Valentine cards and send to other people besides your sweetheart and your kids, you know, neighbors and widows and widowers, um, uh, those in nursing homes. There's a lot of people that we can really bless with our cards. So I want you guys to think about that as we're creating the bay fold windows. In your free download, you're going to have the measurements because there's lots of scoring going on today. Here's my supply list. Order any of the supplies you need. I'd love to be your demonstrator. You could order there. Scan the QR code or click it if you need to come back and watch the video again. All right. Here we go. Let me show you what a bay window card is. So this is the card when it is flat and it's going to fit into a medium sized envelope. No problem. But the cool part is when we open it, it's got some folds here. This one says, just wanted to say, I love that we're friends. So this is a great card for the gals. But look what happens. This tucks in here. And look, it's kind of like those little bay windows, like those little sitting windows. Isn't that cute? 
I love it. And I've got one for the guys as well. Cause you know, we gotta have Valentine's for the guys. This one was super easy. I used the tech support stamp set. This one's for my husband, but look, I didn't do the designer series paper on the inside. Cause you know, it's for my husband and I don't think he needs all the extra fluff, but look at that. A great card for him to take to work and put on his desk and remember that I love him. Um, and, you know, he's a tech guy. He's a computer nerd. So it says, you auto-complete me. You are the one to my zero or you capture my heart. Ah, so cute. All right. Well, now I'm going to show you how to create this amazing Bayfold card. Let's go over the supplies. And we don't need a ton. So that's kind of nice. So I'm going to start here with a piece of balmy blue cardstock. It is half a sheet, four and a quarter by 11. We're going to do the scoring here in a minute. I've also got a piece of balmy blue that is two and a half by two and a half. That's going to be for our front focal image. All right. I've got some pieces of basic white. Let's see what I got. I have a four by five and a quarter. That's for the inside of the card. I have a two and a quarter by two and a quarter, and that's for the focal image on the front. And then this is really just scrap. Uh, I think I cut mine two and a half by two and three quarters, but it's just some scrap for some punching. All right. The last thing you're going to need is some designer series paper. Now, uh, I showed you on this card, I have, I have designer series paper on the front and on the inside. But this card, I only put it on the outside. So you do have options based on how much designer series paper you have. For this card, I'm going to do inside and outside, and it's four inches by ten. Now, if you're not doing the inside, um, I believe, Brenda, will you uh, back me up on this? I believe it's four by five and a half. Yeah, four by five and a half if you don't need it on the inside. All right. Just want to make sure you guys knew that. Let's do some uh, cutting here on our designer series paper, and then we're going to score that card stuff. Um, now, I'm gonna, I, I always have little tips along the way, right? I'm going to give you some cutting measurements. By the way, this is all in the download. But when you cut this, I want you to cut it in order because we want this pattern. If, you're, if your cardstock has a pattern, you're going to want to do this. Can you see? Let me do the inside. Can you see? We want these to all line up. <laughs> we don't want these bicycles going wonky or upside down or any crazy thing like that. So just when you're cutting, if you have a pattern like this, just follow um, my measurements and my cutting measurements. So first thing it's going to tell you to do is to cut off one inch. So one by four inches. All right. I'm going to set that one off to the side. Now what I have left is nine inches. Guys, let's cut that in half to four and a half inches. And we're going to cut through both of these at the same time. By the way, the back of this paper is awfully pretty as well. But we're going to cut through both pieces at the same time and we're going to do it in this order. Are you ready? We're going to cut one quarter of an inch. Yep, that's little teeny tiny. One quarter of an inch. Next, we're going to do one and a quarter. Let's get this on here correctly. One and a quarter. I probably should have been cutting the other direction, so forgive me. Um, one and a quarter. Now we're going to cut one and a half. Let's see, I'm going to have to go at it this way. So one and a half. Yes, one and a half. Again, I'm just making sure everything is staying in order. So I have one and a half left. And what I need is a one and a quarter. So we're going to go this way again, because I want to do everything in order. So, you know, I got to make sure those are staying together. I just don't want to run the risk. It's nice to be able to cut through two at a time, but you know, you guys know, you got to make sure you cut it right. There we go. There are all my pieces. I'm going to move this out of the way because I'm actually done with my paper trimmer. I want to keep all these in order. So I'm going to slide those down, slide those out of the way and keep those in order. Now, how about we do some scoring on our balmy blue cardstock? Now, I had my paper trimmer out earlier and I could have I could have scored on that as well. I just guys, I'm such a huge fan of my Simply Scoreboard and it's just easier for me to see. So, we're going to do some scoring on this. Are you ready? We're going to do 3 8 of an inch. And by the way, that's in between, if you're not familiar with that, that's in between one half and three quarters. 
So that's where the three eighths is. Okay. Um, three eighths, we're going to do one and seven eighths, which is the notch right below two. We're going to do three and five eighths. I know you guys hate me when I have to do these eighths, but I'm sorry. It's what we have to do. Three and five eighths is in between three and a half and three and three quarters. All right. There's that one. And next is five and an eighth. That's just the notch right after five and five. Ooh, that is not correct, Connie. I have five and a half. I believe that should have been five. You know what? I'm going to start to question myself, my friends. Oh, I know you guys just love it when I make mistakes. Five and an eighth. Why is that not quite working the way I want it to? I am suddenly. Oh! <laughs> because it's not five and a half. It's five and a half right there. Oh, oh, oh. Did I need more coffee today or what? Maybe I have brain freeze from my door being open. Oh my gosh. Five and an eighth and five and a half. So it wasn't me. I just can't read a simply scored board. Boy, you thought the three eighths were bad and I couldn't even find five and a half. Good Lordy. Guess what? It's all fine. It's all going to work. <laughs> oh, I know you guys love it when I make mistakes and boy, do I make plenty of them. You should see my trash can. You'll see lots of them in there. All right. What I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to fold on the correct line. Um, I'm going to kind of accordion fold. If you can see, we're kind of accordion folding here. You guys are laughing at me. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's me live sometimes, you know. So um, when I'm folding this, you're going to kind of want to, you'll start to see your, your bay fold kind of coming together there. So it's not quite accordion folded. All right. So about like that, we're looking good. Okay, I'll tell you what, I am going to go ahead and start to adhere some uh, designer series paper down. And remember we had all these in order. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to put the, ooh, let me get everything put together here. So it's these two, can you see how the pattern is continuing? So I've got that. And then I have this one. And then it looks like I've got a peach one. Yes, this one. Yep. So you just lay it right together so you make sure you have the right one. And that's the one. There are my pieces that are going to go across here. All right. I'm going to attempt to glue and chat with you guys at the same time. I don't know if it'll work. I'll probably end up with more glue on my fingers than anything. By the way, when you're adhering these down, let's make sure we're right side up. I will say, if you have paper that is not a pattern, this is going to be easy breezy, okay? Oh, by the way, this paper is the Country Floral Lane Designer Series paper, if you guys were wondering. Beautiful paper. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge, like, bicycle fan. First of all, it's got that retro feel, and you guys know how I feel about that. <laughs> That's kind of one of my favorite things. But um, I, I loved this pattern going across, and especially for a, a girl valentine. But you notice this one just said, I'm glad we're friends. So this could be just a friendship card, encouragement card. It doesn't have to be for Valentine's Day. So we're just going to keep adhering these down. Let's see. The Bay card. Oh, Joanna says uh, the Bay card is one of my favorites and it's one of the cutest ever. Thank you. I know. I uh, I created this one um, many years ago or a couple years ago, I guess. I can't remember, but it was just time to create it again, especially for Valentine's Day. Just such a nice card. Why did that not fit? Why did that not fit? No. What did I do? What did I do? I think, I don't know. Well, you gotta love it. You gotta love it when you do that live, huh? All right, bringing in my original to see what I did. Okay, that makes no sense at all. You know what I did? I can see it now. I didn't score this correctly. I am a hot mess. Okay, that's what I did. I think I scored. Let's just bring it back in. Yeah, that's what I did. I scored at five eighths instead of three eighths. Send me home. Send me home. It's a snow day for Connie because I can't score. Oh my goodness. 
Okay, we're gonna try that again. Let's see, where did I, where was I? <laughs> well, guess what? No one's gonna see it because we're gonna cover it up. At least I can say I got the paper on there correctly. <laughs> More coffee, Randy says, I know, I know. My goodness. <laughs> Maybe I need to change the time I do these because, you know, obviously, you know, I got to get more glue on that. I did not, not quite get it on there. Oh, uh, you know, here's what I love about paper crafting. Talk about forgiving. You know, I can just add a little more, add a little more glue, do a little extra score. No one's going to know. All right. Where's my last piece? This one here. Yep. Catherine says, February 7th is send a card to a friend day. <gasps> I love that. Oh my goodness. Thank you for sharing that. So um, that is going to be a great day to send a card, especially one like this. It's, it's Valentine slash thinking of you. Just a great friend card. All right. There's that. Um, now, before I do the inside, um, you know what? I think I can go ahead and do the inside. Now, we are going to use the same pieces. I'm not going to do this side just yet. This is where the base of my card is. So let's go ahead. We're going to try to adhere real quick for you guys. And I got to make sure I'm getting my, my pieces right here. It's like a little puzzle. And I am a puzzle fanatic. Anyone else? Especially during the pandemic, I just found myself. Um, doing a lot of puzzles. I gotta make sure my pieces are correct here. I don't wanna get things on wrong. Um, Judy says, I love giving mantle worthy cards. I agree, they're some of my favorites. And this one, you know, sometimes like I'll, I'll give people a card. And uh, I had a friend who just got a, a major uh, promotion at work, a new job offer. And I gave her a card and it was, it was a mantle worthy card. And I did have to just give her a quick little explanation on how it worked it wasn't this card but you know it's it's always good to give them a card and they think it's beautiful and then when you show them the magic part they really get excited so all right adding another piece i'm curious is anyone crafting right along with me today i hope so it's always fun to craft with friends always i love having you guys on here and just being able to chat and laugh together and make mistakes together Oh, Lord, hopefully you guys did not score the way I did. If so, you're going to have a creative card like me. All right. And I did go ahead and use my multi-purpose glue, and that's because these pieces are so thin. All right. Now, you are going to have one left over. We do not need this one inside here. So that one, don't even worry about it. We're not even going to do anything. You do have, or you should now have, one piece left over. We're going to use that here on the end, but let's not worry about that just yet, okay? Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and add our basic white here to the inside. And you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and put this down and then I'm going to stamp it. I know some of you prefer to stamp first. 99% of the time I do too. But I want to go ahead and get this part of the card kind of put together and then stamp it because I want to be able to line things up. So we're going to put that down now. This little seam, remember we do have this one right here, that we're gonna glue down. Now you know why we wanted this in place. And look, you're not even gonna see my boo-boo where I scored wrong. You can't even see it. All right, so just giving that a good press. All right, now my card, the, all the messy parts done. All right, we're gonna put that away. Now I'm gonna show you how to create this focal image. I have heard from many of you who have been wanting to purchase the Country Bouquet bundle, and you can't. I am so sorry. It is the punch that is not available. Um, it's not due to come in until April 17th. Now, that's a long time, and that's not a normal time for Stampin' Up!, which kind of tells me either maybe they got a bad batch of them and it didn't meet their quality standards, or a shipment was lost. I don't know, but that is not a normal um, back order time for them. But if you have the punch, I'm going to show you how to use it. And if you don't, I'm still going to show you how to create this card. So uh, I'll tell you what, we are going to start with that little scrap. Remember that little scrap that we had? I am going to get my 
pierce mat underneath me. Now, when you get this stamp, you notice there's two hearts on it, and that goes along with the punch, right? So what I want to do, I'm going to come in with a sweet sorbet for my heart. And remember, if you don't have the punch, I'm going to, I'm going to share a tip with you, so stick around. I'm going to stamp this all the way over on one side, okay? I'm going to bring in my punch. By pulling it all the way over to one side, that now gives me a handle for my cardstock. I'm going to use the rest of this cardstock because, you know, we never waste anything around here. I love holding my punches upside down so I can see and line things up. There we go. So there's a heart and there's a heart. Yeah, I got a couple leaves here, but we're not going to use those because I'm going to use the rest of this little scrap and we're going to do it mint macaron, which matches my bicycles. And for this one, I'm going to stamp these leaves right there. And we can now use the top of this as a handle. Look at that. Well, maybe not quite. I'll hold on to this. How about that? But we can line that up in there. Work with me, little card. Oop, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Okay, there we go. Woohoo. All right. Lining that one up. I knew there was enough of a handle because I practiced this earlier. All right, so there are the pieces for the front of my card. If you do not have this, and I didn't bring another piece of paper, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to do this on some grid paper. If you don't have this, here's what you're going to do. So I'm going to take this stamp, and I don't have my chamois over here. It's at my other desk. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this stamp and I'm going to put it here on the edge and I'm going to fold that under. Okay, so now all I have is that heart. I'm going to bring in the sweet sorbet. I'm going to ink that up. And do you see I'm totally missing that other heart? And we're going to put it right there. All right, that was easy. Now to do the leaves. Um, you can stamp it. I don't have any more scrap over here, but I could just stamp this on some scrap. And let me tell you, these little guys are super easy to fussy cut and you're done. Okay. So you can easily fussy cut this and then just stamp that. Promise you, it's really an easy thing to cut. So don't let it stress you out. But so either way, whether you have the um, punch or not, you're going to be able to create this. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to flip this over because I am going to go ahead and use it with my uh, punch here. And you know what? We started with multi-purpose glue. I guess we're going to end with multi-purpose glue. So we are going to adhere this onto our little two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Now, I want to go ahead and get my sentiment, which is I just wanted or just wanted to say I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. I could have started with this too. You know us crafters. Um, Lori says, I can't believe you're wearing white while inking. I know. What was I think? Well, obviously you guys have seen, I'm not thinking too well at all today. <laughs> I don't know what my deal is. All right. Just wanted to say in balmy blue, and then we can take um, our leaves. And you know what? I think Stampin' Dimensionals are the way to go, don't you? We love our Stampin' Dimensionals. Oh, I grabbed some minis. Oh, well, actually, minis are probably perfect for these. So minis or the full size, whatever you have, probably work great. And now we'll come along either side of our heart, and we can get that a little pop. I think it's super cute. Well, like I said, if you don't have it, fussy cut it. Trust me, it's going to be easy. Let me bring in the uh, balmy blue. Let me get my piercing mat out of the way so I don't get glue on it because, you know, the day I'm having, who knows, right? All right, don't you love our wonderful two-sided paper? No one even needs to see the back of that. We're all about saving our money, saving our crafting pennies. Yep, you could always flip our the Stampin' Up! Basic White cardstock over. It works great. Okay. To add this to the front of our bay, we only want it on this top, on um, the center section. 
don't go in and hear this whole thing down or your car just going to, yeah, it's not good. So we only want to put glue. I'm going to flip it over. This is another trick I always do. I flip it over and that way I can see my seam where I want my adhesive. And I don't have to worry about going off, not having it where it needs to be. Center that up. Oh, this paper, it just, it just makes me so happy. Do you see how we flip that off of there? Okay, um, I'll tell you what, let's do a little work here on the inside. I'm going to bring in that mint macaron one more time. And we're going to say, what are we going to say, Connie? It is going to say, I love that we're friends. Oh, I just hit it. Goodness gracious. I love that we're friends. And then remember, we had that one little heart left that punched out. And if you didn't have this, what are you going to do? You're just going to stamp it and you're going to tuck the big heart out of the way. Okay. So you can still get that little heart on there. So just like we did with this one, we're just going to put the little heart and we can tuck that one out of the way and just stamp that. All right. It's a really great little technique for when um, you need to kind of separate those. You can also cut them, but I know not everyone's a fan of that. All right. Now we got to create that little our little ledge, right? But this has to go on with Stampin' Dimensionals. End of story, it has to be done with Stampin' Dimensionals. One of my favorite methods is to use what I call the Stampin' Dimensional Bones. You guys know I love my Stampin' Dimensional Bones, and I think these are a great use um, for a big, long piece like this. I'm going to cut off these two ends. These are what I call the jaggedy ends. Well, I guess those are the jaggedy end edges, but I can use those on another project. I use everything. I want to put the nice, clean edges to the outside. But this is going to create, and I, oh, I need to make this very clear. All right, so here's here's my, um, my designer series paper. And I want you guys to see, we have to have enough room for this to go under, all right? So we are going to put one piece on this, far outside here, okay? And I can kind of see, in fact, if you want to, I can line that up right here. Kind of gives me an idea of where this next piece needs to go. And you know what? I think I'm just going to put it right next to it. I think we're going to be okay. I'll just put, see how I'm kind of making those sort of touch there? So not one after the other. There we go. I'm going to peel these backings off. Are you guys just laughing at my hot mess of a, you know, this little thing going on here at the bottom of my card? All right. We're going to add this to, let's see, did I come all the way in? No, I left a border. So I'm going to line it up there with the basic white card stock that's on the inside. Are you ready? And tuck. There we go. And we have our fabulous bay window card. Oh, wait, wait, wait. How about some ribbon? Have you guys seen this? This is the petal pink. Um, it's a faux, like a faux suede. I think this stuff is awesome. It's so soft. I'm going to take, uh, I've just got a little knot. I think it's a great way to conserve your um, ribbon. And look at how that pulls out that petal pink in the card. So cute. All right, so what have we learned? Don't listen to Connie when she scores, but I promise you, everything that's on the download is correct. Just don't listen to me when I couldn't figure out what a three eighths and a five eighths is. I promise, I do know my, I do know my scoring. Um, yeah, we're just blaming it on copy. Okay, so be sure to uh, just follow that download um, with those scoring measurements and just laugh at me like I'm laughing at me. All right, let me go ahead and bring in the uh, masculine card one more time. Remember with this one, I didn't do any additional. I could, I could. This is Evening Evergreen, um, the, the designer series paper pack. So that would be from the in color 2021, 2023. Uh, I did it on some early espresso. And then I also added some soft succulent to that one as well. Um, oh, and let me show you something. Um, so I mentioned this stamp set, uh, tech support. Well, I decided to bring in some dies to go along with it. These are the something fancy dies. And so I use these right here. 
to die cut my sentiment. And do you see my little, I guess I'm gonna call it a faux ribbon. Do you see this little faux ribbon here? Well, it's actually this piece that I cut out of some scrap of uh, early espresso. When I finished die cutting it, I cut it in half and stretched it. So, you know, it's only going from here to here, but it allowed me to get a really nice little, you know, we can't put bows on cards for the guys. I did use some rustic metallic dots and I thought those gave it a really nice look. And look at the, I mean, can you believe it actually had a little computer style heart? Perfect for Valentine's Day, I thought. And I, I you know, this I'm thinking of you with the, uh, we call it the spinning wheel of death, but yeah, thinking, mm, not my favorite. Um, Thing, but I know my husband's going to get a kick out of that one because he knows how much I hate the spinning wheel of death. Anyway, so that is our masculine card. Again, just kind of using the uh, something fancy dies, but guys, you can use anything um, on that one. Now, who wants to see what we're making next week? These are super cool. We're going to create on Thursday, February 9th, we're going to create some interlocking cards. Thank you for being so sweet. Oh, my gosh, look at that. You've got a little pull tab. I've got plenty of room to write my message. It was simple to do. I've got two different versions. So whichever orientation you prefer, if you want to go, you know, left to right, if you want to go up or down, there's my happy Easter card. Isn't it so cute? Oh my goodness. We're going to have a blast with these. I'm going to be using the, um, uh, oh goodness, the shapes. These are it's not the beautiful shapes. Help me. It's the other ones. Stylish shapes. There we go. See, just need more coffee. Just need more coffee. So those are the cards that we are going to create on February 9th. Please come back because I'll have more coffee in my system by next week. And yeah, I should, I should pretty much get the score. <laughs> You guys are so great. Thanks for letting me just kind of be real. I think that's what I love about the lives the most is that I can just have fun. This is what happens whenever I create in my stamp room anyway. So it just kind of gives you a sneak peek into my crazy life and what I do when I stamp. So remember, the Country Boutique, you can still get the stamp set. You can't get the punch just yet. April 17th, it should be back. But guys, please don't pass up this adorable stamp set. Um, you can get your punch later. But yeah, you're definitely going to want to have... Um, this stamp set. It is so cute. And you can see how it can be used so far beyond Valentine's Day, right? Love it. And I love those bicycles. Thank you guys for being here. Brenda, thank you so much for being a fabulous moderator and sharing all my measurements. You know, Brenda was sitting back there going, Connie, you're doing it wrong. That's wrong. That's not three eights. That's five eights. I know she did. I know you guys were too. So thank you. <laughs> Have a fabulous day. Uh, just like Catherine shared earlier, February 7th is send a card to a friend day. Go create a card. Send someone an encouragement this week. They're going to love it. It's going to be the best investment you're going to make when you can put a smile on someone's face, right? Have a good one, my friends. See you next time. Bye-bye.